Hi boys and girls, it's Mrs. Pelletier again, and I've got another Eric Carle story. It's so, it's, it's about an animal that's a little different. It's called Slowly, Slowly, Slowly Said the Sloth. Have you ever heard of a sloth? Sloth is an animal who moves very, very slowly. Everything is slow. So we're going to read to find out why this sloth likes to do things very slowly. And all of the animals in the story take place in the rainforest. Look at how Eric Carl did the sky, painted it a darker blue, and then it gets a little bit lighter. And he does it here too. Slowly, 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 a sloth crawled along a branch of a tree. And look at how he wrote slowly, slowly, slowly. Do you see what this is over here? A porcupine. Slowly, 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 the sloth ate a leaf. Do you see him hanging from the tree? That's what sloths do. They hang from trees. Slowly, 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 the sloth fell asleep. So what are you noticing about the sloth? Yeah, he's hanging from the tree and falling asleep. That's very interesting. I don't know if I could hang from a tree and fall asleep. Why do you think he's up in the tree? Yeah, probably to stay safe. Ooh, that looks like a little jaguar there. Slowly, 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 the sloth woke up. So every now and then you see these other animals come into the picture. All day long, the sloth hung upside down in the tree. That's all they do. All night long, the sloth hung upside down in the tree. Here, there's a bat. And look at how he makes the, the night sky look darker. He uses a little bit more black in with the blue. He mixes it. Even when it rained, the sloth hung upside down in the tree. See? What are all the other animals doing? They're moving out of here. <laughs> they want to get out of the rain. But he just stays in that tree and hangs. Why are you so slow? The howler monkey asked one day. But the sloth didn't answer. Why do you think he doesn't answer? Do you think he doesn't talk? We don't know. Let's see. Why are you so quiet? The caiman asked. But the sloth didn't answer. See, he's talking to him, the caiman. Ooh, here's the anteater. Why are you so boring? The anteater asked, but the sloth didn't answer. Hmm. Well, think about their questions. They're not very nice. Why are you boring? Why are you so quiet? Why are you so slow? Hmm. He might be a little offended by their questions. Let's see. And look at these beautiful illustrations. Tell me, said the jaguar. Why are you so lazy? The sloth thought and thought and thought for a long, long, long time. Let's see what he's going to say. Let me pull these off. Finally, the sloth replied, it is true that I am slow, quiet, and boring. I am lackadaisical. I dawdle and I dilly-dally. I am also unflappable, languid, stoic, impassive, sluggish, lethargic, placid, calm, mellow, laid-back, and, well, slothful. 
I am relaxed and tranquil and I like to live in peace. But I am not lazy. Then the sloth yawned and said, that's just how I am. I like to do things slowly, slowly, slowly. Those words that he used, what, what is this? Does that kind of surprise you, this ending? He didn't talk, he didn't talk, he thought really carefully about their questions. And then he uses all of these really big words. I am lackadaisical. That means he's not really enthusiastic. I dawdle, kind of slow, and dilly-dally. I am unflappable. So he's kind of expressionless, you know, like nothing's going to bother me. Sluggish means he's kind of slow. Lethargic, he's kind of tired, right? calm and mellow, laid back. That means he's very, very laid back. Nothing upsets him. And it says he's slothful. Slothful means he's full of being a sloth. And being a sloth, it's not being lazy. It's just that he does things slowly and he takes his time. So, Eric Carle does a nice job on this page of showing us all of the animals that he had in the book. He puts their name next to them. So he does another thing that nonfiction, well, this book was, it gives you information about who the animals are, but can the animals really talk? No. So it's non, it's fiction in that sense. It's kind of fantasy. It's giving the animals voices, which we don't usually, we don't hear animals talk like that. But this has real information about the names of the different um, animals that we saw in the book. So like there's a toucan, there's an anaconda, a poison dart frog, an anteater that we saw here, a yellow sported river turtle, a puma, a jaguar, hummingbird, um, quetzal, that's a different type of bird, a macaw, a cody, porcupine, leaf-cutting ants, cock of the rock, armadillo, uh, here's a pickery, and here's a tapir. So, oh, here's a yellow spotted river turtle. They have all different kinds of animals. So what do you think that the sloth thinks about himself? How do you think he feels about himself? He doesn't apologize for being slow, does he? He's pretty, pretty happy with who he is. He's okay. He's like, hey, listen, I, I am all of those things. I'm unflappable, languid, impassive, stoic. He said, that's just how I am. I like to do things slowly. Okay? So what do you think that teaches the other animals in the book? Think about that. I think he taught them a lesson that, you know what? Just be who you are, and it's okay to be different. They might move fast, but he prefers to move slowly and do things slowly and think things slowly and eat and drink and everything slowly. Okay? So at the beginning of this book, there's a woman named jo Joan Goodall, and she is a scientist who loves to study animals. And she does a little... Um, writing in the very beginning of this book and it says it's called about the sloths about the sloth sloths have fascinated me ever since when i was a child i learned about their existence in the jungles of south america there are two species the three-toed and the two-toed sloths can turn their heads about 270 degrees so that means they can turn their heads almost in a full circle they can also hang from one leg and rotate their bodies in a manner most horrifying to observe through almost 360 degrees. So they can hang and they can rotate their bodies just by hanging almost a full circle. They spend their lives upside down hanging from the branches. They feed mostly at dawn and dusk on shoots and blossoms, leaves and fruits. After feeding for a few hours, moving slowly from one branch to the next, they fall asleep. 
they sleep 15 to 19 hours out of 24, hanging from a branch with their heads laid on their bellies. So they sleep almost the whole day. They look just like a part of the tree because a kind of green algae grows in strange grooves on their long, coarse hairs so that they become the same greenish colors as their forest world. So that's an adaptation. They, they adapt to their surroundings. They start to look like the tree. All their fur, um, all kinds of moths and beetles live in their fur. If the sloths are threatened, they defend themselves by striking out with their powerful arms and dagger-like claws. Sloths live in the same tree for days, sometimes weeks. About once a week, looking fat, they climb down to the ground where they can go to the bathroom, okay? And they carefully bury their waist and they, close, they climb slowly back looking slim. When they do move to a new tree, they may have to swim across a river. They are surprisingly fast swimmers. Sloths are silent animals. Occasionally they comment on life with a gentle sigh that sounds like, ah he. So they don't talk much, which is funny. Like think about all the things that Eric Carle knew about this sloth and he put in this story. He didn't talk much, did he? When I was a child, sloths, although they, although they were sometimes hunted for food by, um, by indigenous people, they had little else to fear. So really no animals are predators for them. It was mostly people. Today they face the destruction of their habitat as forests are cut down for timber or to create grazing land for cattle. So see if they cut down the trees, they can't live because they hang from trees every day. It will do so much to make the young people aware of these delight. Oh, Eric Carl has chosen to write this book about a sloth. It will do so much to make young people aware of these delightful, gentle, peace-loving creatures. And as more and more people care, so there is a greater hope that the sloths, along with their forest world and other wondrous creatures that live there, will survive. So I think she's telling us why Eric Carl wrote this story. Eric Carl cares about sloths and about saving them. And he wants all of us to be aware of that so that people won't cut down their trees. And that's what Jane Goodall is a scientist for. She wants to save animals and study them. Okay, boys and girls, we, we just read Slowly, Slowly said the, said the Sloth. And we've talked about a lot of things that we noticed. Let's go over them. Some of the things we noticed were the words slowly, slowly, slowly are repeated a lot, almost every page, right? The last page has, a, has very long, hard words. And then the pictures are made from cut up pieces of colorful painted paper. Whoops, I to put the, there. Um, just like all of his other books, he still uses the collage. So he painted lots of brown paper and then he cut out the shapes to make the sloth.